Cashflow Diary Podcast, episode 302. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leveraged streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cashflow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's Cashflow Game, Jay Massey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Massey, and I'm excited for you today. Let me tell you why. Because there are many skill sets required to build cash flow and to make your empire happen. Here's the cool thing, though. Because they're skill sets, they can be learned step by step. And today's guest is capable of helping you do Exactly that and more. I mean, he's been able to help his clients meet influencers such as Tim Cook, Bill Gates, Richard Branson, and many others. Think about that. Do you know anybody right now, before we introduce who we're talking to today, that could help you meet any one or all three of those individuals? Maybe, maybe not. But here's the point. You can learn how, you can be connected to, and most importantly, you can become a bigger, better, better entrepreneur by listening to Jason Troy. Jason, you there? I am there. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm glad that you are here because you've got a skill set that everybody needs to know. Period. That's just how I see it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you the exact same question I tend to ask everybody the first time they're here. You ready? I'm ready. (laughs) All right. I tend to look at today's entrepreneurs a lot like yesterday's superheroes. You know, Batman, Superman, uh, Wonder Woman, etc. And I think entrepreneurs and superheroes have a ton of things in common. For example, uh, occasionally entrepreneurs get dressed up. We put on imaginary capes, if you will, and tights. We go around out there and help as many people as we can with our special abilities and super skills, improving their quality of life, just like a superhero. But also like a superhero, entrepreneurs, they don't start out that way. You know, uh, before Spider-Man was crawling on walls, he was just taking photos for the newspaper. So here's the question. Before being able to help your clients, before your book and the 40,000 copies, before all the things that you have managed to accomplish, we want to know who is Jason Troy? Well, I love learning. I love people and I'm extremely curious and that's <laughs> really helped me the most in life. I, and I started out was really just about learning and meeting people mm-hmm. and that really propelled me uh, in my life. And I was really curious too, because I was in law school and getting my master's in communications and I was out in New York city interviewing for jobs and I had, you know, talked to the third year law students and, figured out what to ask and what not to ask. And the last question they said to throw a softball and I figured, okay, well I'll ask him a softball question. Are you happy? Right. And I realized that, that now I know that, but then I didn't realize how naive a question that was to ask because I could tell in the 30 some people I interviewed with, it was the question that all of them either lied in or had the hardest time answering. And then I said to myself, well, why do I want to work in a field in which Everyone <laughs> had a hard time answering what I believe to be the simplest question in the world. <laughs> you know what's funny? When you said learning, meeting people, curious, and then you mentioned law school and communication, I'm like, that doesn't even sound like it goes together. You know? Yeah. You know, and I, it, it's funny because I loved learning. And so education was just something I thought that I wanted to do. And I did it. And I realized. I loved the process, but then I don't like the job. And then I started thinking about what I would need to do to be successful in it. And, you know, then I realized that I needed to do something else. And then I went to Silicon Valley because that's, you know, another hotbed at the, you know, back in 97 
of things were exploding. And that was a you know wild ride. And I got to meet great people and work with Steve Jobs for a year when he came back and work with Pixar and Yahoo back and when they bought Mark Cuban. And so tons of other opportunities. And that was a great you know time to be in the wild, wild west and like be on the ground and go through it all and see the you know, heights and then the depths of what was going on. And so that was a, that, that was a fantastic period of time. And I learned a lot at that time. Um, but it was, just, you know, it was hard, it was hard too, because obviously the pace and the people, and then just getting to place where it was like ground zero, where everything imploded <laughs> into a big poof. <laughs> and a really big poof indeed. So tell us, uh, if, if you will share with us the journey from from there to where you are today. I mean, because there's always this journey, there's this transformation that the, again, the superhero goes through where he or she realizes one, I have a special ability. And then two, they have to make the decision to actually go out there and serve other people with it. Right. So from there, I had never really lived in the same city with my mom. And I had a three friends who had parents who had died and freak things. Like one of my friend's parents died running around a track in Cincinnati. It was a marathon and died at like 50. And so I was like, you know, I really need to go where my mom's at and be here for a couple of years because then no matter what happens, at least I'll have spent some quality time with her. So she was living, she moved from Chicago to Dallas. Um, and I went down here and, you know, I was interviewing for a job and I didn't find anything. I was actually interviewing in Austin. And it was funny. My boss in Austin told me not to take the job and that he had a job for me with another person that he knew in Dallas. So that's how actually I wound up in Dallas is the craziest thing. <laughs> they don't take it. I've got something better for you. So I joined a startup company that was not based here. Actually, it was based in Montana, of all places in the world. Did and you say Montana? Yeah, Montana. <laughs> I'm wondering right now how many people can point to where Montana is. But okay, <laughs> let's keep going. So, you know, that was a you know great opportunity. A startup company went public like the same week Google did. Um, not with the same results, obviously, <laughs> but it did, it did, you know, okay. And, right. you know, at the, at the time I moved down, I didn't know anyone. And I thought to myself, you know, I really don't want to have to do this long restart in another city. There has to be a quicker way. So I sat down and I said, okay, how can I start meeting people and learn what I need to go? And I thought to myself, well, the best places that I've met people and the people I've liked the most and where influences are at and where wealthy people go are to charity organizations and nonprofits, meaning museum, symphony, opera. And I was like, okay, you know, that would be a great start. So I need to start going to all these things. And that was, re, you know, hmm. tipping point. I don't know if it was out at that point or not. But I started to think to myself, like, if I were connecting all these people and could find a way to do that, I would be offering value. And I don't have to have the cash behind it because people want to meet other people. Mm -hmm. So I just started to figure out and experiment with stuff. And it just started to, you know, take off. And I met a ton of people. And then... I had a couple friends and I always try to give value and help people. And I really, you know, didn't ask for things back. I just did it because that's kind of who I am. And I had a couple friends who had friends move from one big city to another and they were really worried. And I helped them for three months. And within those three months, both people had fantastic lives and way better than the ones they had before. And they were really worried about making a transition because they were introverted guys that were like, I think like 30 years old. And I realized at that point I had something because if I could do it to two people, mm -hmm. I could do it to 10,000 because it really didn't matter at that point who it was. It was the fact that I was knowledge. And I put together some information, uh, found some people who had lifestyle coaching businesses, approached them. And one of the people I sort of knew, and then just was off from there, just doing it on the side. And then that, that was really kind of where things sort of, took off. And then I wrote a book and had the other person put their name on it and just started doing some products and coaching. And I just made it really niched. And the niche was how to build a great social life in 30 days or less. I didn't really take <laughs> anything big. I just said, there was not a single thing out there that was anything like that. So I thought, well, let's see if it'll work. It clearly and it did. did. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say it clearly, clearly it did. It did. <laughs> right, right, right. And what I, what I like though is your your test method you're like if i could do it with two people then i could do it for ten thousand, and everything else was a matter of scale um i'm curious to know though because 
again, there's always that decision point. You grow up one way. You know, Clark Kent grew up on a farm, and now he's got to move to the big city and, and adjust to life that way, different way of thinking, different way of living, different everything. How do you transition from I'm working for someone else to I'm going to go do this on my own? You know, I think the real inflection point for me at this whole process was I had sort of a perfect storm of things happening. My dad passed away and we did not get on very long. And we had a conversation. Um, the last conversation I ever had with him is he told me, you know, never don't live your life like me. You need to build relationships with people and do something meaningful. And I kind of squandered, you know, a lot of my opportunities and things because of being bullheaded. And it's a, <laughs> quick way of putting the conversation, but I've never had a conversation like my, my, my dad ever, right? I had a 14 year old cattle dog that I had gotten from, you know, Napa. And it was a whole big thing to just get her an apartment and like had died. Right. And then, and then at that point, the other thing that happened as well is that someone who I really cared about um, and was dating had like a, a major breakdown. And I was at a conference that I was putting together for like 300 people. And I was sitting there, and I saw my cell phone and all of a sudden I saw a text message down that said, I hurt myself and I knew something was wrong. And so I had to tell my boss and I literally got in the car and it was like 20 minutes away. And I went like probably 85 or 90 down the highway because, mm. you know, and then I went to her and a couple of her friends were there and found out she had, you know, cut her wrists and done these other, you know, and I knew something was wrong. And you know, her friends were trying to make things all right and saying, hey, she'll be better. And like, I could tell that something was substantially wrong. Right. But I'm sitting around like 10, 15 people. They're all telling me it's going to be OK. And at that point, I went in there and I said to her and I looked at her and said, I love and I care about you. And you should never have to spend one more day living like this. And, you know, I didn't know whether she would say yes or no. I just knew it was something I had to do. And she said yes. And so, you know, by doing that and really getting her help against probably most people's will, um, I knew at that point with everything that had happened that it was a higher calling for me than working in someone's company and building their dream. Hmm. Interesting. It's funny how sometimes uh, it's through adversity these things are revealed. Were you, was this uh, – so what, what exactly did, did she say yes to that, that shocked you? Help. And the fact that I looked in her eyes and you could, I could tell that at that moment I said the, the most important truth that I've ever said at that point was saying what, literally what I said to you right now. And I knew by her saying yes that I built a relationship with someone that was so different and so authentic, so vulnerable that that was a skill set I had to do something like that. We're in a moment where someone's at that level that they would just say yes to because most addicts at that point don't do that. Right. Or they think, or, or they'll say it. If you research it, they're doing it for other reasons. She went in this process in a different way because I think I started it because of the relationship we had. And I think that it was also hard because all these other people were trying to make it seem as though she could get better. And so I think by saying that was a massive leap of faith saying, I trust you and believe in you more than I do every other person in my life today, period. Right, right. Okay, okay, got it. So clearly there's a skill to building the, these types of you know personal and business relationships. And now clearly every entrepreneur needs them. I know I've, I'm, I'm frequently asked, Jay, how do you, you know, raise capital and how do you do real estate and how do you just do business in general? And it always comes back to the quality and quantity of relationships that you have and how you've managed to make deposits. So I'm assuming there's a systematic way or the, that, that you've developed that would help anyone listening to, to get their business more on the right foot. Yes. And then I think the first thing is that part of the, the biggest problem is you, an internal look. So I always tell people that every external thing that you want to do, you will never do at the level that you could be doing if you don't understand what your blind spots are. And, you know, do some personal development, get some help, which is coaching, you know, read about things on like your ego and other things like that to keep them in check. And that's, that's where it all starts. And, and the number one relationship you ever, you will ever have in your life that will be the most important is with yourself. 
So you, it all starts there. And that's what people don't want to do because it's the hardest. So people skip on it. And you hear a lot of people telling you, well, build great relationships, do this, do that. Like I have clients going to marital therapy and they fail all the time. It doesn't, it doesn't work because what's holding people back is themselves, not the therapist, not the other person that it's them. So I would tell you that unless you do that, you will end up regretting a significant portion of your life when your moment is being called because you'll waste it and you'll know it. Yeah, well, you know, and I, I like exactly where this is going. Most importantly, um, I, I've often told people you will never out earn your personal growth. But Agreed. my my question is uh, the, regarding around the hesitation to even to 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 deal with it. It's one of the first things like people ask me all the time, Jay, can I do this business? And I tell them, no, the version of you in front of me cannot do what it is that you're trying to do. You must become better. However, isn't it more about the fact that people just can't see the ROI in doing that work because it's kind of hard to quantify at times? It is, and it also is really difficult to look in the mirror. And we do anything in life to distract ourselves from that. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Because, because then if we have to look in the mirror, right? Like anyone listening to this, go right now in front of a mirror and tell yourself that you love yourself right now. Say, I love me. And look in the mirror and look into your eyes and see if you can actually keep contact the whole time without blinking or looking away. I bet you probably can't, or it's so uncomfortable that you're forcing yourself to, and you know that it is. And that's a normal thing, but that's why people don't do it. Because then if they start doing that, then they have to have honest conversations with everyone else in their life. And it opens up a whole can of worms of stuff that happened at five years old, all the way up to where they are now. And that's something people would rather suppress and put down or take a pill or buy something than deal with this in their life. And it's got nothing to do with business. It just has to do with unraveling all this stuff and having to deal with it. Well, I, couldn't you make the argument that it has not only everything to do with business, but like, well, everything, because everything. Ev everywhere you go, there you are, that type of thing. And if we don't become better versions of ourselves, how could we ever hope to serve anyone else? I would agree with that. You know, that's what I do with all my coaching clients. And that's what like other people who do what I do don't do this because they, it's easier to teach an external skill set to someone um, than doing this because one, you have to learn how to do it and then you have to go all in on your clients, but you can't go in all in your clients unless you go on all in on yourself. Right. So and people just don't do it. And that's, but I think it's a shame because I think it does a disservice to the people you interact with as a business. If you're teaching skill sets like this about external things that you're doing, without telling people that you need to, you know, create a better you. And not only that, you need to understand the you that's made these choices and the patterns that are no longer serving you and serving the people around you. So if this is the case, and this is, I mean, what you're describing is somewhat, we'll call it even epidemic, possibly pandemic, um, it, because it, it affects us in so many different ways. Uh, what would you say are if you had a list, if you had to, if I asked you to make a, like a top seven list of the things that would be entrepreneurs need to get on straight, what, what would you say? Well, I've done this with a couple hundred people and I've yet to find anything that's led me to believe it would ever change is that something that's happened under the 10, under 10 years old is your biggest blind spot today. And so I would tell you that is, huge piece of what is going on because hold on, what hold on, happened, hold on hold on hold on what do you say that again because i think so so yeah so something that happened under the age of 10 years old is your biggest blind spot in your life right now that's holding you back okay give like okay unpack that a bit give us an example of something you've seen so someone can relate to it because this okay, is sure. interesting okay you're probably figuring out that this answer to the next thing is super important and well it is Be one of the things though before i get you to that is to understand that well we all have blind spots all of us and one of the most important things about a blind spot is that you have other relationships in your life to help you see them what does that mean? That means wealth is a team sport. That means you can't do it alone. That means you need additional individuals in your life. Yes, you, in order to build your cash flow and make that happen. The cool thing is, with today's technology, 
relationships can be everywhere. So as you're going out there to build your cash flow, as you're going out there to become bigger, better, and badder, make sure that you pick up a few friends along the way. With that being said, let's get back to the rest of the episode. So I had a, I had a client that I did uh, a group session with probably like a year ago. And a sales manager, she was in her early 30s, who was doing well, raised her hand. And I'd at, she, I asked her, what's the problem? And she was just like, well, I want to sell more. And I was like, okay. I was like, what's the story that goes on in your head? And she was like, well, people don't want to buy from me. People don't want to listen to me. And, you know, went a little deeper and I said, well, what emotions come up when this happens? And she was like, shame. And I feel bad about myself and said a few other things, which thought that's pretty insane that that these things are coming up when you're selling shame. Like that's not something you normally would come up. And we dug deeper in limiting beliefs. And she said she felt like she wasn't good enough. Uh, And then I dug down and asked questions about her, about what happened during childhood and stuff a little bit. And then I asked her after. And one of the key things, takeaways, when she was in college and she got on the phone and talked to her mother or grandmother, they told her that she had this high-pitched, squeaky voice. And she'd never amount to anything unless she changed her voice. She wouldn't find a great job. She wouldn't get married all the rest of these things. So what really happened then is she hated getting on the phone now all the time. And she was always scared because the thoughts of her not feeling good enough and nothing would go well was a tape that played every time she did it in business. Well, so, wow. so what I did for, I said, okay, now what you have to do is tell every current client and every prospect when it's appropriate, right? That this is the reason you got into sales. And they said that if you don't, you will always be haunted by this the rest of your life. And the easiest way to get over it is start telling yourself that I need to share my story with other people because other people probably have similar stories to me. And, you know, it revolutionized her business and how successful she was and how free that she was in her life. Right. And it was a minor change based on a pattern that happened, you know, 20 years ago or 15 years ago. So it, it was, uh, pretty simply simple, right? It's not something crazy that you have to do. These are often very subtle, small shifts that you have to make in your life. But that's, I mean, I would say to you, that is one that happens in every person and I've yet to see it. And it's, it happens at CEO level, chairman level down to, you know, regular people. <laughs> as long as they had a parent. <laughs> right. As long as they, as long as they, as long as they grew past, as long as they're older than 10, right. they're, uh, you know, and right now an adult, then that will be the case that something is going on. Interesting. Okay. And you can do that quickly. Like, I mean, I could, if it's a client of mine, I, I can do that in like, you know, 90 minutes. Not something I got to sit in like quasi therapy for like weeks or months to figure this out. It's not <laughs> that level of doing it. You can, but you don't need to. There's some trauma, of course, that's whole different, right? Then you need to be doing something. But, you know, most of my clients don't have that level of a trauma. Right, right. Got it. Got it. Okay. So then once someone, once we have that mirror, which is basically what you're saying, you're like, hey, I'm the mirror. Here's my superpower. I can help you figure these things out to more or less have a better relationship with yourself and others. Yes? Yes. Love it. Love it. Because then then there's stuff like ego that comes into this whole thing. And, you know, there's a lot of different stuff that you can learn, but you've got to understand the patterns that no longer serve you anymore. And they're not helping you get where you need to get. And if you don't do that, you'll sabotage yourself along the way and you won't be able to use the tools and things that I talk about when I'm coaching clients to get as far as you can with people. And that's, and everyone's got their own style. So I don't teach people like a particular style. I help them bring out the best version of themselves. And that's all they ever need to do. Got it. Got it. Now, uh, because I know there's someone listening who will be able to benefit from this, what would you say are the most common reasons that trigger someone going, you know what? I need to talk to Jason. Well, usually it's a, I call it like a divine storm or a storm happens, meaning they're hit rock bottom. And usually it's a multitude of things, right? Family's not going well. Social life isn't going well. Business isn't going well. Somebody's died. They've gotten health problem. I mean, it's usually multiple things that knock them off or they get some, they get some information delivered to them. They realize that they need to change or things are going to go really bad. You know, 
it's it's more rare. It's I haven't had anyone come to me who's done who's doing well and saying, "Hey, I know I'm doing well, but in order for me to get to the next level, <laughs> I, I need to come seek you out." Right? It won't have done that. Though maybe a CEO who's bored and the passion's gone out and something's really wrong, and then they'll come to me. But it's not uh, that they want to get to the next level and things are going well now. That could happen, but that's you know I, that's not where people go. They have to be in some level of pain to seek out help. Yeah, well, you know what I I, I think, Jason. I think your superpower really is compassion, because you're doing work that well. It, I think it would be easy to say that many people don't want to do, and you're helping people in ways that that most of us wouldn't even consider until, as you said. Uh, the, the, you know, the bottom drops out and then you're there to catch you, you are volunteering yourself to catch in that way. And I think that's admirable to say the least, um, which then backs right into my next question is where does your desire to do that come from? You know, I love helping and serving people. And I think, you know, for me, giving, helping, inspiring is into my DNA. You know, I think it's really important. I went to a Jesuit high school and our motto was being a man for others. And I really walked out of school and my school, although it was, you know, religious, we didn't read the Bible, study it. We had like mass, maybe like three times a year or something. It was about <laughs> helping other people. Right. And we had mandatory service. And in high school, you don't really think about that. But I learned a lot from doing it. And I went to some disadvantaged communities and was helping kids and doing stuff. And I realized and I could see some of the benefits that were happening. And I realized at that point that this wasn't just some hokey mantra. It was something that was going to make a substantial difference in my life. And I could really help people. And that would be a life worth living at that point. Got it. Got it. Now, at the top, we, we talked about you. You mentioned that curiosity was one of those things that uh, is, you know, that helps you, you know, through life. And I'm curious to know how that plays out in your relationships uh, or how that plays out in, in the standard entrepreneur's life. Like, can they make this thing work without curiosity? I think it's one of the necessary pieces uh, because of the way we work and how we do, but I'm curious to understand your perspective. Yeah, I, I, you have to have it. Because what happens, it, what happens with people is they plateau otherwise. Because every level you get at, you need more development, you need more information, you need to identify those blind spots, you need relationships, you need coaching, you need all these things. And unless you have curiosity, you're not going to do the necessary things and you're going to plateau. Right. That's why you don't see many Richard Branson's out there. It's not because you couldn't. It's because people think that they've done it all or there's not another level and they're not willing to put in the work and constantly think about how that they need to get better and get to that level. And that's the difference. And so you just you have to do that. Right. I mean, it's something like in the fall, I'm going to Harvard in a couple of months for two day leadership and communications. I'm going to Berkeley. In December, I'm doing other stuff. I mean, I'm doing all these things. They'll benefit my clients, but they'll benefit me. And I know the more I learn and the more opportunities I get, the better I'm going to be, the faster I'm going to be. And there's really nothing or anyone that could get in my way at that point because no one else will do it. So I know that I don't have competition because the other people would rather do other things than invest their time and money in development. So, Right. I, yeah, I get it completely. It's it's almost like uh, that the personal development is your Olympic sport. Right. And it, and it needs to be for everyone because, you know, these things, too, if I go to leadership and communications, it helps me be a better leader in my personal life. So all this stuff helps you, right? 80% of the stuff in business is, it is applicable to your personal life and vice versa. So it's, uh, it, it's a really powerful opportunity for you to really impact your life. And if you want to have a great relationship with someone in your personal life, I mean, whether it's a partner, whether it's friends, whether it's family, like this stuff is absolutely critical for you to do if you want that. If you don't, well, then you don't need to. Right. But if you don't do it, you're going to hit your Waterloo with someone and you're going to have a precipitous fall and you won't know what to do. And it's kind of like clients who have marital problems. They didn't get there in a month. If they, just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If it happened for a couple months, but it right. happened for years. Right. And 
but people just do it and they go on autopilot because here's the thing. If they did development, they wouldn't be there because they would either be out or they would be all in. Right. Now, what, what's interesting about what you're bringing up is that there's a lot of leadership. There's a lot of development. There's just a lot of everything that it plays into specifically the real estate entrepreneur's life a lot. Many people yep. uh, and I tell people uh, and believe very strongly real estate is one of the simplest businesses to do. But it's complicated because it requires so many people just to get one transaction done. You the person who wants to be that real estate entrepreneur must become the leader of them. They must become that person because the actual steps are simple. My, I guess my question would be, why does it feel so difficult? But more importantly, what can uh, someone looking to get started in, in, in business do to help this process move faster or simpler for them? What could they do right now if they're listening that would put them on the right track to make this go smoother? Well, I think the first thing is that you've got to understand in life that you have to take a leap of faith, not for the landing, but for the experience. You can't get attached to outcomes, right? It's not like you can go in real estate and say, I'm going to buy this place. And if I don't make $50,000 off it, then I am a failure. <laughs> right? Well, 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 hold on. The, the, you can't say that, but that is a lot of what people communicate I, to themselves. I, I, you. I hear you, but you know what? If I, I've spoken to hundreds of very successful entrepreneurs, people who've made hundreds of millions of dollars, and I ask them a question: Out of every ten thing, ten new things that you do, how many do you get right the first time? And they said, <laughs> between five to seven of those things we get wrong the first time, and some of it significantly, right? So life's about pivoting, learning from the lessons, and moving forward. And if it's a zero sum game for you. And you have to do certain things, good luck, because you're going to have a really rough life and you're not going to be successful. And so you might as well just stop because you can't have that bar be at that point because it doesn't make any sense, right? I mean, it, it, look at someone like Michael Jordan, right? I, it's funny because I heard this thing today about Tim Tebow playing baseball. And I thought to myself, and someone brought up Bo Jackson, and I thought to myself, you know, Michael Jordan is great an athlete, couldn't play baseball. And he realized and he went back to what he loved to do. And there's a lot of things going in that. But Bo Jackson, he did both. Well, okay, you know what? We can talk about you know one athlete in a lifetime that anyone knows. I mean, it's a freak of nature. But people can't do these things, right? I mean, it's just it's not possible. Right. So you, you, you just can't be good at a sport and think you can do another one. It's just not, it's just not there. So it's the same thing with this. I agree 100%. Now, I'm going to possibly ruffle some feathers because it is common knowledge or at least I've heard it said many times, for example, and it's really true with clients that I've worked with that have uh, higher degrees, doctors, attorneys, uh, et cetera. Uh, and again, they've, they're very accomplished in their field, yet they somehow beat themselves up or feel like, the, how come I can't get this real estate thing to work? I'm a doctor. But I would say those two, they're, they're, they're two completely different playing fields, new rules. Right. Too complete. And the problem is, is what makes you good in one way doesn't make you another way. That's like the same people who tell me that their business is going well and their personal life isn't. And I'm like, well, of course, because you're trying to you're trying to fly a jet airplane in your business. Right. You can you're always looking ahead in your personal life and in your personal life. If you're not present, then it's going to fall apart. And you got to think about it like flying a Cessna. Well, they're two different things, flying a jet airplane and a Cessna. And you can't apply the same principles to either one. But if you do, you're going to be really huge problems, right? So that's why when people want to get in real estate, that they have to realize that they need coaching. They need personal help. They're going to need to invest in someone who takes them by the hand for part of this. And that's it. And, if they, you know, and it's not going to be easy. And it may take years for them. And they may find out that it's not right at all and that they need to pivot to something else. Well, oh, my goodness. Can you please do me a favor and say that last part again? Because I know somebody, they were probably on the treadmill. The dog barked in the background. The kids tugged on them. They needed to hear what you just said. I mean, you may try this and you may have to pivot to something else. You may not find that real estate you know, is right for you. And you but the lessons you'll learn will lead you to the next investing opportunity or things that you should do. 
you have no idea how many people I've seen do that. I mean, they've gone on to do some very interesting things. And uh, one of the most important things I'm always hoping people gain is clarity. First of all, do you really want to do this business or do you just want the benefits of this business? Yes. And two completely different things. Completely different things. And I, I just, I, I wish, I hope more people hear what you just said because it, 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 we get into this cycle of frustrating ourselves. How come I can't get this to work or why is this not fun or blah, you know, all of these things. And the, the truth of the matter is we should probably just be doing something else. I mean, I've heard a lot of your stuff and what I would say to someone and I don't even like, I don't, I mean, I, why they would go and do something with you. And I've heard a lot of the pot, I've listened to podcasts as I was like, well, I can tell the genuine, authentic, and he really would want to help you. Now, maybe you'll find out that investing isn't for you, but I guarantee you what will happen is if you spend the time, energy, and money, you're going to find out what it is, and you're going to make your you know, return back tenfold. It may not be in the time frame you want. It may not be how you want it to go in the beginning, but it will work because the person who's doing it is the right person, and their intentions and how they're going about it in the right place. Now, you may do fantastic, but you have to be willing and open to the other possibility before you'd go all in. So, and I like this, let's go down this rabbit hole for a second, because we can always plan our steps as best as we think is possible. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to get married on this date. And then by this date, I'm having kids. Oh, and I'm going to buy this property. And then by this property, (laughs) all of these things, how critical has it been for yourself or for your clients uh, or for entrepreneurs in general to be open to something other than what they thought was going to happen? Well, you've got to realize that you are in control of very little. And it's the ego that gets us in trouble because it thinks that we have a lot more control than what we do have over our life. And we don't have control of other people and other circumstances. So that's why timelines are useful in the sense that there's some urgency. And I think it's good because it takes us to act but we can't rely on them as the goal line because it just doesn't work. No, I, I, I agree. I agreed 100%. Now, here's what I know. I know that as the people that have listened this far, they're gonna, they want to know more. And before I get the, the email, do us a favor. Tell us how they, we, we can track you down and find out more about what you're up to and what you're doing. Because I got another question I want to ask you, and I think you're going to have a great answer. So my website, and it's brand new, is my first name and last name dot com. It's Jason, T-R-E-U dot com. So you can go there and get all the information, guides, book, blog. I'll be doing a podcast, too, in a little while. And so, Woo-hoo. yep. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. I'm really looking forward to your answer here. So uh, no pressure, though. Uh, so uh, let's pretend for a moment, Jason, that... Uh, there's someone who's listening right now and th- they're standing in front of the superhero outfit store. They're ready to pick out their outfit, man. They're, they want, they know the, the mask, the cape, they're, they're, they're getting fitted. Um, they're ready to be this entrepreneur. However, they, they have this voice in the back of their head and it, it's constant. Uh, it, it's persistent. It, it wakes up with them. It, it, it carries them through. Anytime they start to thinking about how great they're going to be, how many bullets they'll be able to catch with their bare teeth and, and, and all of these great things that they'll be able to do, this voice appears. And occasionally they're related to that voice. My question to you as we wrap up here is let's pretend that they're actually going to physically do exactly what you say. They're going to do it in the next 24 to 48 hours. What would you tell them to do? Well, I would say one thing is write down three things that you're scared of doing that are not big but are small, perhaps meeting a new person, uh, whatever it is, and do those in the next seven days. I would say number two You need to figure out what your blind spots are and you need to research and invest in someone to help you because if not, that won't help you get any further. Three, pick one to two charity or nonprofit events. They could be happy hour or small things and go in the next two weeks to them and 
go and spend at least 60 minutes. You don't have to spend any more. And then ask yourself, are these the types of people that could help me in my business and in my life? And how could I help them? Nice. We've talked to hundreds of people. No one's, I like the, the idea of going to the charity event a ton. Um, and I think a lot of us are putting that one off in our heads. We're saying things like, after I make it, then I'll go to that. And you're flipping that. No. And, and you're saying go now. Because th- that's the people who have the cash that you need. Right. I mean, go, I mean, you can't ask for an order to someone who doesn't have the money. Well, go to the places they do, right? And then you start building this up, then people will want to help you. And you don't need to sell to them. Just show up as the right person and add value in their lives. Help me introduce them to other people. I mean, there's a lot you can do with zero money. You, in fact... Social capital is the most powerful capital in the world by far. There isn't even close to that. I have clients go to the TED conference, which has, you know, got about a thousand people and some of the most influential people, and they crushed it. I mean, they're crushing it. And they definitely are not coming there with the most money. And it doesn't even matter because they're working it and they understand how to interact with people and understand their psychology and how to get them what they need in the right time and add value in their life in a way that no one else does at the entire event. And then it's game over. And it's same thing for any, anyone listening to this. You don't have to be an extrovert. You can be an introvert. You don't have to have skill sets because it's like you talked about in the beginning of the show. Like, this is all learned behaviors. And so the choice is you're just not choosing to invest in yourself and getting these skill sets, which are an essential skill set, whether you're the CEO of a company, whether you're in a company, whether you're doing a real estate business, whether you're doing any business or in anything in your personal life. So the choice is pretty easy to make, but people got to do it. Indeed. I love what you've said here. I hope people were able to pick it up because you've definitely dropped a lot of nuggets that, that will unlock and open many, many doors for people Thank you for taking the time to to share what you've experienced and know uh, with us here at the Cashflow Diary. Hey, well, thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for you to move at the speed of instruction. What does that mean today? Well, one, somebody better be looking up a TED conference, a charity event, and going over to Jason Troy's website. Why? Because you know you just heard something that you are not doing that you could be doing within the next 24 to 48 hours that will help your business grow. Now it's up to you to go make it happen. It's been fun talking to you guys today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time. 